Hi guys and girls, welcome. Uh, I, I want to show you a, another a project logical editor uh, command that I made. And the reason why, just making myself ready here, is uh, when working with uh, sample libraries from a lot of different companies, they have different standards on uh, uh, using different uh, comp um, continuous controllers or CCs for adjusting different things. So one one of those uh, might be like di dynamics, how loud it's playing, or uh, vibrato in this case. So <clears throat> vibrato um, is not consistent between sample libraries and some use CC2, some use CC21. I, uh, Spitfire, for example, uses uh, CC21. And so I set my controller surface up uh, with that in mind. And I have like a modulation, expression, vibrato, and variation. It's, it's the main four faders I use. Um, and I want to keep using those. I don't want to add another fader uh, for other libraries that does not adhere to that standard. Uh, it's not really a standard, but I started buying a lot of Speedfire libraries, and so that's what I'm sticking with. So when I bought libraries like Studio uh, Cinematic Studio Woodwinds is an example, Cinematic Studio Strings, let's have a look. Um, let's see if this is a good example or a bad example. If we have a look here, the CC for vibrato crossfade is CC2. And I want that to be CC21. So one way to solve this in all the different libraries would be to change this to CC21. And you can actually resave this patch as, see, it says cellos, and you could say sifter. I could say that and, and I'll say save, save as, right? So I could say that. And that's going to actually appear in this folder, uh, which is very helpful in, in some cases. Uh, I've done that. I've done that. Um, and I have an example of, of kind of hacking the system sometimes to get more um, functionality out of a single patch and combining them and doing all sorts of, of cool things that way. So that is one way to do it. But I kind of wanted to try out um, doing it from Cubase. And that is possible. And in fact, I've done it earlier. So this is the instrument track. And it has, uh, of course, a MIDI track as part of it. And it's right, right now it's sending on MIDI channel number one. Okay, so this would be the same as if I added another MIDI track to it. Uh, and and then the MIDI inserts would be here just, uh, just the same. So the thing that we're going to add in is uh, called a transformer, which can do all sorts of different things. But in this case, we want to translate uh, CC21 to CC2. So the CC21 is going to be coming from my control surface. And we want to translate that into CC2 because that is what the plugin will uh, interpret as a vibrato. But that is going to enable me to to you. Uh, yeah, make it work always. So <clears throat> let's add in some of these things don't really make that much sense. But I want to do I want to do So in case you're wondering what to do, uh, you can open up a MIDI monitor on every track and, and just have a look at what what's happening. And so you can kind of see that the 65 that is the CC number value two, that will be the amount from 0 to 127 value 3 i'm not sure maybe after touch that is the key down for example okay so i need to change this to value 1 equals 21 like so and when it's uh transform that to uh, CC2. So let's check if that's working. It is now working. 
So uh, I, I had a little trouble getting this to work. Let me see if I go out of this and do it over again. Not the track control, but the transformer. When we're adding value one equal to 21, it says uh, a note instead. So let me see uh, what why that is not working. So I need to set the action target also to value one because that is the CC um, field, right? And operation set, set to fixed value. I'm gonna set that to parameter two. And let's see if that now solves it. It does not. So that is a little buggy. Let me see if I can get it working this way. No. So I'm just gonna repeat what I did and say, MIDI monitor. Okay, so it's not working now. However it is though, we're getting the CC, uh, CC2 out of it. And if we turn it off, and get it up again, it's back at 21. So it's just a visual glitch, it seems like. So a little fumbly, I'm, I'm sorry, um, but uh, it seems like this should look a little bit different. A minus one, in fact, means 21. <laughs> so if I say two, it's gonna say another note, but okay. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, what you also can do, which I have done, is say that this, uh, it, it, you can't save these as like plugin chains. However, you can save this as a track preset, which I've done. So you can save this uh, and and have like a miscellaneous. So here's mine. Um, so if I load up another one, I say uh, add track using track preset. We can say sifter CC21 to CC2 and I can add that as a track. And here we go. This is now a new track with, which actually has this. Um, which is very helpful uh, to be able to do. Um, you could of course save this as a, a MIDI track without any sample data on it which would probably be a better solution, but I, I think you get my drift. So, so if I need to do this, this is a good way to uh, make sure that it's consistent from within Cubase. And so whatever happens to your contact libraries, if you're adding new ones, you don't have to do this over and over and over again. Uh, and it's very easy to create other routings. So for example, if I want to change the modulation, which uh, is usually on CC1, like the mod wheel, if I want that to be a CC11, if, uh, it is in some instances, then you can do that very easily and so on and so on. So you can make your own transformations of CC data, which is very helpful. So hopefully you got something out of this. Um, please tell me if you did and I'll be back soon with another video. Thanks for watching.